Where's Stu Harmin Freon and welcome to another video. In case you've still been wondering why the entertainment industry of today has found itself in such a bad shape and why all the influencers and uh, non-paid critics and YouTubers are, well, in the majority of cases making very bad and negative reviews of films and TV shows, please do look at the screen. And this is not the only example just look at every single or every other interview with uh, actors or showrunners or huge film studio executives. It's all about pushing agendas. It's all about trying to cram modern socio-political propaganda into the works of art of different fantasy authors. Now, House of the Dragon star Emily Carey says a major focus of Game of Thrones spin-off is misogyny and how it affected the women in this world. Now, of course, if you know anything about the books by George R. R. Martin, you know that he, of course, based his stories on uh, the real history of medieval Europe, but... His works are also very progressive in that you, at, at least the half of all those characters are strong female protagonists that really wouldn't be as influential in the real history uh, as they were in the, uh, the Song of Ice and Fire or the Game of Thrones or the Fire and Blood. Just look at Cersei Lannister. Look at uh, Daenerys Targaryen. And of course... Uh, the majority of the female characters in the uh, the the book, actually, that uh, this TV show is adapting, The Fire and Blood, published it around... When was it published? 2018? Well, let us dive into the article by Bounding into Comics, and then I shall provide you with my take on it. House of the Dragon star Emily Carey says a major focus of Game of Thrones spin-off is misogyny and how it affected Ty, uh, the, the women in this world. According to series star Emily Carey, the topic of misogyny will be one of the forefront of HBO's upcoming House of the Dragon, as the Game of Thrones prequel will apparently showcase and explore how the concept pervades the lives of women in Westeros. Carey, who in the series portrays the younger version of Alicent Hightower, spoke to the series' themes during a joint roundtable interview with co-star Millie Alcog given to members of the Legacy Media ahead of the spin-off's premiere. Asked by screenwriter writer Tatiana Hollander how their characters deal with misogyny in the series, Kara began by explaining, I think uh, part of the key for Ellison is she doesn't fight back. I think she doesn't know how to, and I think part of her doesn't want to until she's there, said the actress of her character. And then maybe she regrets certain decisions and certain choices, but I think she doesn't have the power to fight back, mainly because she's a child when we find her. Jumping off from there, Carrie then asserted, But I said it before, and I'll say it again. My favorite thing about this show is that, yes, we showcase misogyny, and we show how it affected the women in this world, and how it relates to these characters, whether it's Ellicent or Renera or Rares, uh, even. But when, it, when we take away the storyline and theme of misogyny, these characters still have an arc and are still complex women on screen, she said. They're not just there to serve the purpose and to show misogyny. They are human beings put on screen. And I think that's a brilliant thing. Adding her th own thoughts, Alcock opined, I think ultimately it's, got, it's down to the writing. And what the show really leans on is how these two women are met with the same kind of patriarchy, but they react in entirely different ways. The actress told the entertainment news outlet. Because uh, of their given circumstances and because of who they are and the privileges they've been afforded within their lives. I think that Renira especially is a fighter, she continues. Turning to address the character specifically, she fights for what she wants and she doesn't like to take no for an answer. But I think that these two women deal with it entirely differently and that's what makes the show quite interesting. Because I think that a lot of people can see themselves in Renera as much as Alicent. Or rather the 12 Twitter psychos who are only shouting out into the world things about representation, misogyny, the oppression of different marginalized groups want to see themselves in those characters. Uh, but no sane human being who just wants to be entertained by a fantasy show does. 
Alka would further tease the serious exploration of misogyny while speaking to, to IndieWire's roundtable representative Proma Korsla. House of the Dragon really creates a nuanced conversation of misogyny, she touted to Korsla. We don't know they explore it through a level of women being shut down in the patriarchy, but also go in depth about the internalized misogyny that women are constantly faced with and the com- competitiveness. Alison and Renera's relationship are, uh, is at the forefront of that conversation. Carrie and Alcock's preview of the series lines up with the previous revelation from series co-showrunners Miguel Sapochnik and Ryan Condal that midway through the development of House of the Dragon's first season, the two realized that the show, they were unwillingly centering its story around the theme of how, as put by the Hollywood reporter, the patriarchy would rather destroy itself than see a woman on the throne. It wasn't something where we said, we must make the show about this, stated Sapochnik, but rather it's something where you realize that uh, what's, uh, that's what we had in front of us. Our Artist of the Dragon premieres on HBO on August the 21st, 2022, so that is uh, in 10 days uh, at the time of making of this video. Now, what can we take from this article and the interview with this uh, particular actress? The fact, once again, that actors should shut up. They should not be interviewed. They should only do their part, play their part, and then be silent. Because you don't want to advertise a TV show like this, where you chase away the majority of your uh, well, audience, really. The beauty of A Song of Ice and Fire and The Game of Thrones and The Fire and Blood is... Uh, pre- Especially, precisely, and exactly what I mentioned at the beginning of the video. And it's the very extreme diversity to which George R. R. Martin went when he wrote it. You can find strong protagonists from all groups in the world. It's really very progressive. You've got strong male protagonists, strong female protagonists, strong protagonists who are considered to be um, disadvantaged today, if you look at Tyrion Lannister, you look at uh, people of different color. Of course, we've got uh, two continents to focus on. Not only we've got the north of the Westeros and the south of the of the Westeros continent, but we have the the very south. Then we have the um, the the lands of Essos. So and we have the Dothraki who take up a huge part of uh, a Song of Ice and Fire uh, series or saga, and then of course a Game of Thrones TV show. You can see the rise of Daenerys Targaryen from being basically sold to a Dothraki leader to becoming uh, one of the uh, strongest or most you know the uh, strongest conquerors in the history or <laughs> quote unquote modern history of Westeros. But also, and that is the most important aspect of every fantasy, you have, whoa, surprise, surprise, the fantasy aspect of the show. You have, or, I mean, of the books and then the show. You have dragons. You have uh, white walkers. You have magic. You have ancient swords made of Valyrian steel, which is basically like adamantium. The most perfect steel you can possibly imagine. So that is what the work of George R. R. Martin really is. It is uh, a very typical fantasy, but modernized and uh, put into really uh, the context of today and pleasing everybody, really. Why do you think uh, the Game of Thrones TV show was the, uh, that popular at the beginning? Well, first and foremost, that's first, the most important thing, because it was so very well made. Now I'm talking about the show, because not many people read, but the show made it very popular. Like millions and millions and millions of people all around the world were watching the, the Game of Thrones, because it was very well made, They're like very well made. At least the the first three to four seasons. Because there were a lot of surprises, a lot of shocks. People were just awaiting, you know, we're just waiting for another character to die or another shock scene to appear. Uh, the production of the TV show was of a very high quality. It really felt 
if, if you only think about the beginning of the first season, really felt like a a fantasy uh, northern regions with the Starks ruling over it. Very grim, very dark. And then when you move to the south, you can see beautiful weather and uh, you know the nice landscape and uh, the uh, the King's Landing. But you can feel, you can feel in the air the atmosphere of the uh, schemes and intrigues and murders and lies that riddle the uh, entire infrastructure of the King's Landing. It was perfect. It was a very good TV show. And of course, uh, modern matters were touched upon, sociopolitical issues were touched upon in the show, but they never were put in the forefront. They were always only included. <clears throat> they incorporated the show. I mean, they were incorporated into the show. But each and every single article, each and every single interview you read about the House of the Dragon is about some modern bullcrap. About how misogyny is affected in the way, la la la, how the, and I've made a video about that too, how the showrunners uh, and the screenwriters, they deliberately race warped the entire House of Valerian because they deliberately wanted to avoid putting more white people on the screen. I don't care. I mean, I don't have to watch it. I will watch it for content. I will watch it so I can make video reviews. But do you think that you will attract more audience with this? No, I think you would attract more viewers and more audience just by talking about how awesome that show will be and how there will be strong female protagonists and strong male protagonists and how there will be dragons. It's called Bloody House of the Dragon and they have never bloody ones mentioned any dragons. Yes, we have footage that there will be dragons. We know there will be dragons. But there's like 1% of all the advertisement focusing on the bloody dragons. And 99% of the advertisements and the commercials and everything that's being talked about is centered around misogyny and oppression and racism. And people don't care about that, really. No, just give them good show, you'll make millions. Ah! Idiot! Alright, my friends, let me know in the comments down below what you think, and I'll be all. Thank you very much for watching, and I'm out of here.